This is episode 259 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion. My computer decided to be like, you don't get to podcast today. You get seven hours of tech uh, support for yourself, maybe a few tiers, and you'll just figure it out tomorrow. And I'm joined by Ryan. This is not Monday. Stan Yeah, it's Tuesday. I don't know why what's happening. Apparently something like Dion said that has to do with a computer that got angry at him, specifically a hard drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it happens. It happens. Everything's backed up. It just takes time to get set up. Uh so if you are watching, if you're watching from home, uh it's gonna look a little weird. If you're listening, it might also sound weird because like all of my like audio tools and fancy stuff, like I don't got any of those things on. It is, is raw audio. We're going we're going a little little more old school than maybe you guys are used to. But uh but hey. It's going to be okay. We'll survive. It'll all figure itself out here in the next week or two. And our podcast episode is brought to you by our GSP patrons. Um, I spent seven hours trying to fix my computer yesterday because I care about what you think. Uh, Did I get any results? I didn't, but... Uh, that's why I tried. But uh, quick note, I did post on Discord today that um, unfortunately uh, the artist for the Resistance uh, set, our Heroic Squadron, uh, unfortunately uh, due to timing issues is not going to be able to have the uh, the, car, the art done in time. So I'm going to have to make a last minute pivot to actually get you guys some swag here for quarter two or... We just do a double wave for quarter three. I did make a post on Patreon. I did make a post on Discord. I'll make that decision here in the next couple days. Um, what I am leaning towards is in order for it to make sense for shipping wise is to probably for anybody who gets just cards will probably hold off and wait for a double wave for quarter three while I get some more art commissioned. And for the upper tiers, I have some ideas for things to kind of fill in because the reality is I can't get the plastic cards. And that takes that's like a three month process to get those cards in house. So, like, I need to get art done for quarter three now to uh, to actually have it in a reasonable amount of time. So that's the plan there. Keep your eyes on uh, Patreon and Discord for updates there. Um, Yeah. So today's episode is a fun one. I, I, it's well, I mean, it's, it's an introduction to a deep dive that we want to do. And um, in X Wing two point five, we have the introduction of the scenario, the scenario, if you want to be fancy. And AMG in their initial release gave us four different scenarios. And one of the the ideas being that they promote different things within the game, different strategies. Uh, but I mean, we're we're creatures of, of of we like diversity. We like variety is the word I was looking for. We like variety. And I was basically asking, like, why not more? Why not more? Now, Ryan, I want to toss this to you real quick. Do you remember kind of thinking about that uh, open letter that they gave when they released the scenarios? What were some of the goals that AMG had with us playing with these scenarios? So as far as I recall, one of the biggest parts of scenarios was to help encourage, uh, give the players a reason to engage with each other and give uh, a clear goal in mind when you go to play the game. Um because we have had issues in the past with X-Wing to where you don't have to engage or you you wouldn't want to engage because you don't want to engage on your opponent's terms. They don't want to do the same things. You're just sitting there doing circles around each other for a long time, which eventually someone tends to break and they're just like, all right, fine, I'm going to go for it and play the game. Um, very rarely would we actually get people who would stick to the I'm going to run until uh, I find the most opportune, most possible engagement, and it just turns into anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes of just why are we doing this <laughs> type of thing. Like I get some people do enjoy uh, mm-hmm. that sort of uh, setup, that, that run around, that they had fun with that before. 
Um, but that's not what AMG's philosophy wanted to go forward with. They wanted to make sure there was a lot of consistent action, that it was a chaotic dogfight, and gave you reasons to engage in multitude of ways via multitude of different types of scenarios. So um, I think that's something big to keep in mind is I think the, the baseline thing that scenarios have to do is to get you to engage with your opponent. Mm -hmm. Now, one of my thoughts when I, when I when we had in our podcast chat, I was like, you know, we always talk about what, what do we want to talk about this week? And we have upcoming, we're, we're in, in, on the books, we have wanting to plan a GSP league. Now, Anytime I do something like this, I like to iterate. I like to be a little bit inventive. And I was like, all right, how can we add a little bit of spice to something like a weekly league where people play once a week on, online, um, but have it be a little bit different than what, they're, what they normally do and basically be kind of low risk and low uh, investment to try something new. Because, for instance, if we started with a, like, all right, here's a full weekend of six brand new objectives that's a little much i i think to get started um so i was like you know what i know you probably you guys probably have ideas for scenarios let's let's try to make some let's try to kind of live in amg's shoes and give some of our our own ideas for what objectives could be what different scenarios could exist but I did lay down a couple of guidelines because when I have brought this up before, I've seen people talk about it. There sometimes are some logistical issues that can come up with their ideas and scenarios. And if I gave you just a completely open palette, you really could really make anything. I wanted to make a constriction in order to make it usable in a tournament, essentially. And here were some of the rules I said. First, it has to be played on a 3x3 three three mat. You can only use the normal components. You can't add anything outside of what people would normally carry in, a, um, in, in, a, in their tournament kit. So, basically, you know, you have your normal obstacles you have your ships you have the expected tokens for those ships charges focus evade ion etc um and then one of the things that amg considers part of the normal kit was the hyperspace token i know for ryan when i threw that out as, as on the list of things you could use he went hmm interesting uh, because the hyperspace tokens um you know they come in the core set now and they want it's it's a piece that amg in the future could end up using for some type of scenario play i'm trying to i'm going back in our conversation i think i feel like there was one other restriction i gave uh, i can't remember specifically but i think overall it, while you look for it i'll say you just got to make sure that whatever components you're considering whether it's actually in the game for measuring, for counting, for whatever. You need to have something, you need to have what is available physically to the player is available physically to the players now in the game of X-Wing. Mm -hmm. So don't like plan a scenario that you'd be like, I need a, an actual ruler with inches or centimeters or whatever. Like, no, it's not here. You have range rulers, have movement templates. Trying to restrict it to what is available in X-Wing and what it's designed to be in X-Wing. That's right. So, um, yeah, I found I found our conversation. Uh, I found our conversation here. So I said um, components available. You have your objective tokens, uh, player markers, which are the the circle, you know, red. What is it? Red triangle and blue square. Right. That's the thing we use to denote like. For scramble transmissions, you mm -hmm. put your marker on there to denote that you've claimed it. You got a first player token, a hyperspace marker, and of course your regular charges there. And one of the one of the first things uh, today is kind of a uh, diving into some of the philosophy of what are some different ideas that we can explore, as well 
as starting to give some idea, some we're starting to share and bounce off of each other some of our initial ideas for how we want to, or for scenarios that we want to make and maybe get some feedback from those of you who are watching live and uh, and of course from each other. Um, one of the first discussion points I wanted to go to is um, scoring. Right now, all of the scoring in in their current four scenarios basically go up to 20 they have that same that same trigger of 20 points um do you think that scenario points have to still be at 20 do you think that's something that we can move depending on the scenario what do you, what do you think uh, i think it's definitely up in the air to move whether it's right or wrong you don't know until you try it mm -hmm. um a lot of what you're gonna find out of and this is to you the listener yeah <laughs> when, um, if you attempt to make scenarios, you have to make sure that like, you don't hold on to any idea you have it. it don't, don't baby it because it could get thrown out. So like you could have this grander plan of making it a 30 point scenario thing. And you realize, man, this game takes forever to pro progress, or it takes just the same amount of time. You just increased the amount of points and it never really mattered. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you could have adjusted it anyway. That's so, very true. Um, I would definitely make sure that it's it's on the table, uh, but don't get uh glued to a, a point value because it mm -hmm. you when when developing something like scenarios you need to be flexible, and uh, you want to lay a good foundation and groundwork. So don't get too complicated or fixated on something. Yeah, for myself, one of the things I found when I was thinking about creating these objectives was using you actually kind of hit on it is taking that point number and basically making a decision if I want that number to matter or not. So for instance, if in the scenario, which was, so we can get to it, uh, whether or not there is a way to score in the game that is separate from like destroying ships, do you even get points for destroying ships? Right, half points, not half points, and one of the scenario action, or one of the scenarios that I was looking at or was designing, um, I basically I was I was having trouble figuring out the points because I was like, wait a second, how fast can people play to actually make the points matter? And then I started realizing, I was like, wait a second, if they're killing ships, they're gonna get to twenty faster than the thing I want them to do. So what rules can I add? to prevent them from killing each other, which was a really weird idea, <laughs> like a really weird road that I went down. Uh, I'll, sh I'll share it in a minute. But, yeah, it's, it's interesting that, that points going up and down, how that can, um, how that, how that can affect how, how you perceive a, a scenario. Now, here's the next question I have for you, Ryan, is let's talk about the goal of the scenario or the different goals that you can have. Cause it was an interesting discussion. I know that Marcel's not here to defend his, his side. So I'll try to play his, his, um, his thoughts. Um, we had the discussion of scenario should, should make you engage, right? What was, was one of the, the kind of the, one of the ideas that we had in our, our discussion. Yeah, I, I posted something in the regards that, that that I mentioned similar that I believe AMG AMG's philosophy is, which mm -hmm. is the scenarios are designed to not force engagement, but to incentivize engagement. Mm -hmm. You don't have to engage, but you're probably going to lose if you don't. Right. Of how the game's set up right now. So you could, from some perspectives, they could think it's forced at this point. Right. Other perspectives, they are maybe 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 not as much. It depends on the stereo, depends on what you're playing, um, and how you feel about the game itself. So, uh, but and then Marcel, I believe you, if you are playing the role mm -hmm. of Mr. Marcel Manzano, yes, he had responded in kind. He went, no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> what if what if the scenario actually discourages engagement? There's a, there's a whole nother whole nother objective in the scenario that doesn't necessarily you know I, it's almost like a like a why not both could we create a scenario that doesn't necessarily push engagement 
like it encouraged you to maybe not be as actively engaged and does that vari- I'm gonna does that add to the variety of of, of what's in the scenarios because one of one of mine after that that conversation I had an idea for one of mine that doesn't necessarily encourage engagement it encourages doing the thing that I want people to do but if you engage you could have different consequences and outcomes because depending on like what lists your opponent brings you might be encouraged to um to 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 engage or not i think maybe maybe is the is maybe instead of encouraging engagement is it encouraging play Play, like a, a different a different kinda, word a different word other than engagement i mean so technically right we were playing the game before a before amg in a way that could be that could be considered in in two basic avenues one you want to fight your opponent mm-hmm. baseline and you want to kill as much stuff and win the game right the other avenue is I want to win the game no matter what I have to do, even if it means I kill the least amount of things possible. Mm-hmm. There are definitely two different philosophies, and there are many X-Wing players that land on either side, right? Now, that doesn't mean the player who wants to kill everything won't slow up the game and find the perfect engagement and play around a bit, right? We've seen that ourselves loves to kill everything, but also wants to make sure he finds his right engagements because he does normally play AC or ships that he wants to be careful with. Um, And also we've seen plenty of people who literally will not engage at all whatsoever until they find, until their opponent comes to them and engages where they want them to play. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how they want to win. Um, AMG says we want to have engaged. So while they were still playing the game either side um amg's like well we don't believe that the latter avenue two being the um i'm not going to engage if it means i'm going to lose so Mm -hmm. if if it means i win because i don't engage i'm going to do that amg doesn't believe that that's playing the game of x-wing in their philosophy Mm -hmm. um they're definitely uh people who have philosophical differences uh and don't agree with that and that's okay but I think uh, I know what you're saying. You try to find another word for it mm-hmm. because in the aspect, either way is playing the game. Um, what engaging is actually interacting with your opponent. And maybe that, maybe that's the word interact because engaged makes people think fighting, right? Mm. Interact means you might be doing things other than fighting. Maybe. I don't know if that's a good word or not. Yeah, for you. yeah. No, yeah. I it's there 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 has to be we the thesaurus.com, but yeah, I'm I, I will tell you one of mine. One of mine is inspired by Star Wars Resistance. Okay? And the idea of racing. Some type of reach basically like touch point objectives in a specific order. Something something along those lines. And one of the problems that I was having was like, well, I really want them to do the race feel. I want them to be able to have some other type of consequences. So I, I have – that's my least refined out of all, all of my ideas. But I was like, if I'm encouraging them to go in a specific order and the idea is a race, that you could affect the race by sending off ships to go and mess with the designated racer, because there's a designated racer in mine. Um, you know, does that count? Who gets to choose the designated racer? Right now, it's the pl- so I get to choose mine and you get to choose yours. Okay. Right now, and I I flip flopped it a couple of times because my idea is like you have a racer. And you have my my brain was like in Star Wars Resistance. There are always like the pirates who would come in and mess with the races. You essentially have your racer and your raiding party, 
is what you what you bring or what you designate. Um, so that's out of the control of your opponent, but you can bring your raiding party right to mess with the other racer in some in some way um which was that's also the scenario is like well i don't want the racer to die how can i prevent them from dying so i'm i'm st i'm going down a rabbit hole there right now but that's that's the one where it's like you don't necessarily have to engage with each other cuz you could keep your racer and your raiders together to protect your racer right and that's a conscious choice i guess if you have the obviously better, you know, I have a tie interceptor and a bunch of beef to protect it in this scenario. Maybe it's better for me not to engage. And is that okay? Is that is that an okay place to be in the like while while designing while having that question? Is that okay to exist in one of the scenarios or a couple of the scenarios? What do you think? So. Let me ask you this, throwing mm -hmm. you a curveball here. Have you considered deploying the racers in a different place? Yes. Yes, I did. If all right, this is very uh so chicken scratch, okay, for those of you who are watching. So I have these little boxes. Alright. So the idea was that you have a larger section to put your raiders and a smaller section for your racer. And this mm -hmm. very fancy round thing was that you have to go around in a certain order. But yes, I did consider that. What if um, instead of going to the objective points to be mm -hmm. a specific order... Mm -hmm. All you're telling the racer to do is to get to the opposite zone. So, like, let's say if you got these these kitty corner things right now, right? Mm -hmm. And you say the racers just need to get across the opposite corner from each other faster than the other one. The the objective tokens can just be Mario Kart style power ups that could give you uh the ability to slam to boost to regen health or shields have some more defensive capability stuff mm -hmm. like that so you could go straight across the board if you want mm -hmm. um and get there as fast as possible now maybe you find that going corner to corner is like way too long and racers never make it there they always die along the way <laughs> right right um, which is you could yeah you could change it to normal deployment for your raiding forces in the range one, and then on the side board, in the sideboard range one for the racers, and they cross each other like that instead of cornered. That could be cool, and that's, that would be faster. It would it would be faster, and that's what one of the things I kind of want to test because because my my current iteration is that they need to make it all the way around and touch all four corners. Like, that's right now, that's what I have. I don't oh, know if people can make... it. really I, hard. It is. It, I, I, I know that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I, think you, I think you need to start with the shortest distance first. <laughs> so my, my solution, very elegant, was like, what if you can't, like, you can't deal damage... This sounds really strange, but you can't deal damage in this objective, which sounds a little weird because I was trying to like what takes up the most amount of time. Number one is moving ships, right? It's always moving ships, but there's a lot of time of like, all right, I attack, you attack, you attack, you attack. So I'm trying to come up with a way where is it viable to go all the way across or I like your idea of, you know, if you can't get all the way around, is it? two corners because that's what i would try i would try first like all right you start in one corner and you got to get to the other three and then i was like well, okay they're never making it they're either dying or just like time runs out which is my yeah. my first the kind of the first thing i'm running i'm i am trying to face off against and then all right cool you can't hit three corners well then you, now you have to hit two corners and kind of making making that adjustment and then so why do you want to go around instead of through where it's could employ more of the pirate effect so just my my thought right now is just the designated racer needs to get all the way around like it's it's one ship one yeah, ship that needs to hit the rings 
right? What Once is all it... damage done to the racers is high on tokens. That that's one of that's one of the things I have down is either some type of ion effect or like because all the ions clear automatically, but I I wanted some way to make them immune. Like for a turn, it's like I, because my thought is like being ioned every single turn. That sounds like not fun, but if yeah. it was an ever some some type of scenario rule, uh, scenario rule, which we'll talk about here in a minute, um, that could work with that. But again, that's my least refined one. Like that's this is where you you have I have a big idea and I got to start. Yeah, this is crunching so it this down. Might, this might roll into our next thing right now in the segue, yep. which is uh, foundation is key. Start simple. Um, mm -hmm. So I got caught up in this because I had a few people take a look at mine mm -hmm. and I just layered on like things I think I, I thought I needed for my scenario, just like dice rolls and like objective points and like all this, like a bunch of stuff. And then uh, one of the people came back reviewing and he's like, just, I would say, what do you, what is your actual, and this kind of ties back to the previous thing. What do you want people to do with this? What is the goal? What do you want to occur? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess to kind of explain mine a little bit, as Dion alluded to earlier, I wanted to implement those hyperspace tokens. And I wanted to give the potential opportunity to give a ship or some ships flanking capabilities from these hyperspace tokens. Um, I actually already named it ambush at the hyper lane. Um, the idea that in star Wars, there's those hyperspace lanes that are for trading and all that stuff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I started a little, probably too cluttered. And there's a lot of big stuff, things, and all that things, but um, overall I tailored it back and I said, all I want to do is provide a ship the flanking option from the hyperspace uh, token. Um, I don't care what you roll, whatever three prongs you come out of any one of them, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, then I tried to, and, and this was when I first iterated, I was like, there's going to be die rolls to see, do you come in this end phase or the next turn end phase based upon the die roll and maybe the objectives you grab increase your odds on that die roll. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's kind of cool. And and person came back to me and is like, do you want them to stop people from getting, through? like, do you want to ever have the chance for someone not to be able to come through the hyperspace token because of these dice odds? I said, probably not. So I'm tailoring it back even further. And I think, like, I just want to give, like, before we figure out if this is a good avenue to go down, a set turn that a ship or these ships come through the hyperspace. And then I tried to figure out, you know, what's the incentive to even put a ship through the hyperspace? Because that can leave leave a ship out to dry. Right. A lot of people might just default to what is the minimum amount that I have to put in that hyperspace to be available in this uh, scenario? And it doesn't matter how much if if I if I increase the rules to, of the minimum to like, all right, it can be at least one ship. All right, they're gonna take like their two point Derek and throw it in there every time just because they don't want to lose out on most of their fighting force against their opponent. I'm like, all right, what if I increase the minimum, they're just going to keep taking, keep taking the minimum anyway. So it, that defeats the purpose, right? They're never going to want to do more. I said, all right, maybe I was like, you know what? What if we did a little bit of a gambling bit, right? If you threw stuff in hyperspace, as soon as it comes out of hyperspace, you get, points equal to the ship cost or half points equal to the ship cost as soon as it comes in it's like oh you once it comes in you get those points like that's cool because you know you took the gamble on it that was when i still had the die rolls affecting it a little bit on when it could come in the game it's like oh yeah so you can hedge some automatic objective points by just putting ships into it then i had the problem of all right we're putting some ships into there turn order how do we figure out who has to put stuff in the objective in reserves first right, right? Do you if, look, player you're looking like, says, yeah. if, if player <laughs> one says hey i'm gonna put derek in reserves and the other player is like all right well i know we put derek in there so i'm gonna put this in there you know so then do i do i snake that do like a snake draft where 
Player one goes and player two goes, then player two goes and player one goes. Do I allow passing? Do I allow? I was like, oh, this is so annoying and hard to figure <laughs> out. Incentives and dumb crap. You know what I did? I said, screw it. Players don't get a choice. You get to choose your opponent ship that goes. So okay. now, now I say, okay, I choose my opponent's X ship. That one is going, that one is coming out of hyperspace. Like, okay, how do I know? So I have two hyperspace tokens. So a little bit of clarity on this. Um, imagine if it was the standard five objectives, but the last two you place that you would normally place on your opponent's side of the board are the hyperspace tokens. So you're effectively placing one on your opponent's side hmm. after the obstacles, because I don't want obstacles. It may I may have fixed this in another thing, but we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want obstacles affecting it. But overall, I was like, okay, now player order, player order again at the end phase of whatever turn I decide they come in. I say, all right, do I have that effect? All right, player one says, I'm going to put, I'm going to take my ship and put him at this hyperspace token in this slot. Should I allow him to be able to put him at the same hyperspace token in one of the other two slots and then just automatically get the flank on them? from one they just had probably not so i said all right maybe player one gets to pick the hyperspace token they use and then that one can't be used this turn like well that gives player one an advantage because they get to pick it first or not so i figured you know what let's make it a little more static but, uh, just for now until we figure these things out keeping it simple mm -hmm. whatever one you whatever one you place on your opponent's side of the board that's the one your ship's coming out of no matter what one of the three prongs of it doesn't matter, but you have, but your ship has come out of that one. Simple. All right. So now, what what can we maybe disincentivize someone from automatically picking your most expensive piece to have it forced to go through hyperspace? Mm -hmm. Keep that rule where if that ship comes into play, that player that owns the ship gets at least half squad point value in mission points. Yeah, I mean that that so, that's a that's a gamble because you're like, do I want my opponent to not have their best ship available and me try to pounce? But I or, by taking that by by hedging that bet, I as soon as that ship comes in, I'm giving I'm giving my opponent that many points like that. That's a that's a that's a tricky. I like that. Also, think of this. Also, think of this. And this is where kind of the revelation hit. Ambush at the hyper lane, right? Uh huh. There's two ways you can ambush. You either get ambushed by what's coming out of hyperspace on your flank, or if you know if if the turn is static and we keep it that way, which is fine, the opponent can decide to say, you know what, I'm waiting on that ship. I'm setting the trap around that hyperspace when it comes in, and ambush that way. Oh, so not a set turn when they come in, but it's like no, there they, is a set turn. There is there is a set turn. For now, okay, for now we're keeping yeah. it simple. Yeah, because all we want to figure out is does this work? Is it fun? What does it accomplish? Baseline. So I figured at the end phase of turn two, for now, is when that ship's coming out of hyperspace, and that's for both players. Mm -hmm. But there are still three objective tokens. In the board. I don't know if I'm going to keep it at one point or if I'm going to increase them to two because there's only three. I was going to do five, but like five objective tokens, two hyperspace tokens, six obstacles. That's a lot of board clutter. I wanted yeah. to reduce that. So I'll start three. And you place Norm Widow one. Each player places one on their side. And I wanted to treat them like the assault on satellite array. You need to be within range zero to one. Because what I didn't want to have happen is for someone to go, all right, click. I've got that like scramble. Now I'm going to turn at that hyperspace thing and wait for that ship to come at me. Right. So you still could set up within the assault uh, zone based one for scoring. But um, I wanted to offer that. Now, there could be problems. Maybe the points incentive isn't enough. Maybe people still always default to the highest ship cost one. But you know, maybe there are times where they're like, I see a clear linchpin in your list that may not be the most point cost, but it does drive a lot of what your list can do. 
So I put that in hyperspace. Yep. And maybe it's easier to kill than the highest ship points, but it's one of the second or third highest point costs in your list. So I'm going to make it go through hyperspace and I'm going to decide to set the trap instead right. of you, instead of giving you a good ship to flank me. Hmm. But like they're allowed to deploy in any three of the prongs. They could say, I don't accept the trap and just run away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, um, I'm thinking about what, like, there's there's a few, di depending on the squads, this is going to affect them more or less, which which is one of the things that just exists in scenarios, right? Like, certain squads are going to have advantages in different scenarios because everybody's not bringing the same squad, um, squad to the table, which I think is part of the point of the whole thing. So I'm thinking about, like, the you know, the list I've been flying lately. If somebody goes, yeah, Bosk, Bosk is going into hyperspace, I'm like, ooh. Right, it's, it's my biggest damage dealer. But again, you know, coming, I'm getting three or three or seven, depending on what the what the what the rule ends up being, points back. But I'm losing that threat for a couple of turns. Like that is, I find that really interesting, Ryan. I like that. Yeah, I mean, we'll see where it goes. Um, my tests on a few things now. I probably rambled in on a whole bunch of stuff, but I do have a lot of it already typed out mm -hmm. um, as a baseline right now, and I'm I'm curious to you know see 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 how it feels to play. Um, like I mentioned earlier, just one of the like pitfalls I wanted to avoid was players putting obstacles or putting obstacles in a way where um, they would affect that ship coming out of hyperspace. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna make it a scenario rule. When a ship deploys from hype from the hyperspace token, it ignores the effects of the obstacles. It overlaps in the turn zero, turn two end phase so that it can exist overlapping it. But mm -hmm. as soon as it does this maneuver next turn, if it has to go through it with the maneuver template, it would take the effect. So it, it, it lessens the issue of locking ships into certain hyperspace prongs. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm keeping it. It sounds like there's a lot. It's because I went through the complicated stuff that I found was just too much first. Yeah. Simplified it down. Took away the potential for any turn for stuff to spawn in. Made it one turn. Simple as that. I made sure that there was, you know, designated. This player gets that hyperspace token. That player gets that hyperspace token. It's always meant to be the one that is on your opponent's side of the board for the idea of the ambush, whether the ambush is caught on the hyperspacing ship or the hyperspacing ship is ambushing on a flank. So it's that nice two-way effect that it could actually occur um, instead of trying to say that they had a choice. Because if they had a choice, they might just choose the one on their side and it defeats the purpose of the intent of the scenario, I guess, in, in my eyes. Uh, whether or not it turns out to be fun is a whole nother question which i believe segues into the next part yeah so you know obviously when it comes to playing a game we want to make sure that we're having a good time and the whole the press of the catalyst for wanting to have this discussion and and actually taking the time to really get into that game design brain was to make sure that we have more more variety, variety is fun, and just making sure that the things that we create are usable and repeatable, right? Usable and repeatable so that people are having a good time. And for – I'm going to actually use this as a pivot to talk about my more completed scenario. And one of the – one of the biggest complaints that I, I saw from uh, specific factions in uh, in the X-Wing community was, why do I just have to fly at people? Like, I want I want to have some time to wiggle waggle a little bit. All right. Let me try to build a scenario that is a balance between you can't quite run away the whole time, but you, you got to at least get – a little closer. You can't be completely disengaged, but a little closer. And uh, I, I'm currently call, calling it the refinery conflict. All right, refinery conflict. And the um, the 
Mission objective is a battle over precious Tabana gas mines, uh, but the fighting has caused the gas pumps to become unstable and dangerous. So here's your scenario setup. You ready? You got four objective tokens, four scenario markers. They're going to go range 1-1 one, one in all four corners. And very simple. This is essentially a dogfight variant is what it is. There's no center objective. And at the end of the end, uh, at, the be at the start of the end phase, if you have a ship within range one, you receive a face-up damage card. Because you've essentially experienced a explosion from one of these Tabana pumps. And the... The idea there is, so now we're not so much crowding the center for chance engagement, which is what currently, what, it, what it's trying to do, right? There's one in the middle, meat in the middle. Is I'm giving, it's more of a, of trying to create a circle that is safe to be inside of. And if you want to take the risk with a chunkier ship to be farther away, you can do that. But you're going to be punished for it. You're going to pay the cost. Originally, I had just suffers a critical damage. But I was like, no, I don't really want to be like, well, I got like seven shields on this thing. I'll just plink a couple of shields. It's completely worth it. I was like, well, we have to make it hurt. All right? You got to make it hurt. So I decided to make it a face-up damage card after that one. Uh, scoring what you would expect obviously you get full points for destroying a ship half points for half um and that was it I, I the simple idea of giving a different flavor to a space battle to just a, a chance engagement then i had another idea when it came to um analyzing the scenarios that we have we drew a uh, a line to halo and the different variants that exist in that game right we have oddball territories king of the hill and slayer like those are essentially you can do direct comparisons to all four of the official scenarios that we have and i was like well you know another popular game variant that exists that's still kind of like slayer uh if you think about a lot of the battle royale games that exist they have a certain area that kind of shrinks right so one of the things i would try with mine like kind of like the next iteration is i would first start with just the four corners and see see how people like it and then i would Probably test a variant with, with some type of turn counter that does one of two things. Either, which would be the more com the more complex version, would be, which was my first idea, was moving the objective tokens. But I was like, uh, that sounds complicated and weird. It would be after a certain amount of time, potentially, that it reaches farther out more than just range one. Maybe it's now range one to two. Right now, I didn't go with that in my final roundup. I just made it range one. But it's an idea to either go for or a variant that could exist in a completely different objective. Because um, that's one thing I'm, I'm noticing as well, Ryan. Is like when I have an idea and, you know, we talked about you start with all this giant pile of ideas a for one scenario. And as you start stripping out pieces, don't. I would say don't completely throw that idea away. Put it to the side because it might be its own thing, right? That might just not belong in that build. Now, I know that my idea for scenario is what I'm going to call more basic. <laughs> the, not as creative, I'm going to say, as yours. But what, are your, what are your initial thoughts on that? Uh, the refinery one. Mm -hmm. Refinery conflict. Refinery conflict. So I like uh, on a thematic basis the Tabana gas or adding those into the game. Um, it does fit well in the Star Wars universe and uh, work well with a scenario in general. Um, we only have four asteroids, four Tabana. So why an even number, not an odd number? 
So I went with an even number because I didn't – at first I had five. I had all five of them out there for the center. But one of the, the problems is it, it created a donut that you wanted to fly in, and you couldn't – not that you couldn't. It, it punished low health ships, low hull ships from being in the center of the board. And I was like, that's weird. So I took out – I took out the center one, and it just give it. I was worried about well, I like to fly interceptors, and I keep dying in your scenario because you put the thing in the center, and it's terrible for this. And I was like, well, I was trying to give a little leeway for different lists. That's why I ended up with four. I also wanted my other goal with this one was what's a very fast setup. A very fast setup, and this one, because it's, um, I, I, I'm looking for a way to. Uh, we, Photoshop isn't ready on my computer yet, but we would have diagrams, and essentially, there's a specific way that they need to be set up. But because it's just one one in all the corners, it's super fast. Just set them up. I, I obviously we have, we'd have to put like technical wording for how to set it up, but essentially both players just put these the, the objective tokens one one in each corner uh with the the nubs facing this way like in and you go and, and you go from there um but that was the main reason why i didn't put an odd number was to prevent the donut issue okay um mm -hmm. so Correct me, the putting him at one one, mm -hmm. do they move ever from that or they just stay there? They just stay there. They just stay there. The, it's a it's a you got it's a you can't stay too far away from your opponent. I'm I'm essentially shrieking the board is what I've done. And a, a long a long winded way to say the board's smaller than you think. You you have some pockets like the player edge range one in. You can stay safe there and and slow down if you want to, giving some of those people who like to dance a little bit some of that room to do it because you're not punished for not immediately engaging. Um, but if you stray a little too far, let's measure that range one. Well. Face up damage card. So I'm just trying, I'm shrinking the board, but allowing people to dance a little bit. Okay. So, does it sound fun to you? What What are, what are your thoughts? I know it's, again, it's uh, not as creative. So it's, it's, it's essentially a pushing people into essentially where chance engagement would happen mm -hmm. without having a way to score mission points. Mm hmm. Um, well, the, the mission point is because in all the was one of the things I was analyzing was how they worded their scenarios, right? Just killing a ship is a way to score mission points. There's just not an additional way in this current scenario to score them, which I think I think that's okay. Like, and that's one of the debates I was having is like, do you have to have a way to score objective points or excuse me, mission points outside of just killing things. And I was trying to trying to play with that originally. Um, Cause I got another one that is way more complicated. It's all the words in the middle of this one uh, that you, it's like almost exclusively mission points, <laughs> but I was trying to kind of go on both, uh, both ends of the spectrum. Sure. Um, I think one that we can bring up that I think was talked amongst uh, Will, Marcel, you and me mm -hmm. in total, and I think um, this may have been brought up in a few circles of uh, X-Wing communities I had talked to, um, is the idea of a VIP or a bounty type um, mission where it's a kill based. Oh, is this the one you're pointing to as Capture well? Capture the commander! <laughs> so you're doing a capture so i'm, I'm right. thinking bounty like a kill based one so right. um basically we have uh 
anywhere from one to two ships that get chosen. I, when in doubt, <laughs> if you're having trouble trying to balance uh, players getting to make their own choices on their ships and deciding who gets... Because let's put it this way. If the bounty rule is the ship that has a bounty on it or the or who the VIP is mm -hmm. um, is worth double their points, everyone's going to pick the cheapest thing in their list. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's two different ways to incentive to change that. One is the my route I took, which is, hey, uh, the players don't get to choose their own ships anymore. They are going to mark their opponent's ships as, for a bounty. So now, uh, theoretically, they could... Uh, take the, the it would now very go commonly going to be the most expensive ship um, because that could straight win them a game really quickly mm -hmm. um, if you put a bounty on Boba you win the game if you kill Boba <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, which, if you kill it's, Boba, you probably win a game anyway. You d you des I think you deserve to win <laughs> in, that, in that case. <laughs> but we're like, okay, how do we make sure those ships don't just decide to run and never, mm -hmm. ever, ever want to play unless they're very, very safe? Right. Um, well, what if we incentivized uh, them engaging? and the ships that have a bounty on them could be a variety of things. It could be uh, every time they do damage to a ship that earns X amount of mission points. We don't know if it's one, two, three, four, who knows if they do damage at all, or we could say for each damage, they get plus one mission point to the controlling player. Um, so now know, that's, a, that's a balance of like, do I choose my, my opponent's most expensive ship was really good at smacking stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the decision you have to make. <laughs> that's good at, good at smacking me, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the simplest way to take that version is to first say, okay, let's just keep it easy. We are going to say it's going to be one ship, so we don't have to worry about multiple yet. We want to make mm -hmm. sure that it's fun and works is you, your opponent gets to choose your ship they've marked as a bounty. That ship gets doubled its cost is now or it, its cost or what you can earn from killing it is doubled. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how maybe half points could work in this. Maybe they don't. Uh, since it is, since yeah, maybe, no. maybe half points. Maybe half points, uh, I don't know if it's too confusing or not, maybe half points work on everything except the bounty ship. You have to take it out. It's the only thing that matters. Because then if you have to half double, it's basically you're getting its original cost. And I think mm -hmm. the point is to take out the bounty ship. Right. Uh, so, um, and then you just have to find a baseline to say, okay, to get this ship to ever engage. We're either going to take the route of each damage is do it does is one mission point. Does that break it? Is it too much? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's where, that's where try it out and figure out what will work. Cause then you'll find out maybe it needs to be every time it does damage, it gets one, two, three, whatever amount of points. Mm -hmm. um, or any ship it does kill, they get double. Oh, okay. That's that. That's a whole. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. Uh, you want to mark hmm. their most killy ship there? I don't know. That's that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah, I went. I went a different route with mine. I, I like. I like that. I like again. But maybe again, anytime you have a different way to do things, maybe it's a different variant. Maybe it's a whole different scenario. So my capture the commander. I didn't. Mine's a little more complicated. So I went from super simple to complex, but there's probably some pieces we can rip out of this. So right now, I I, I started with the player, like the opposite, the enemy player choosing the, uh, the commander. But I was like, with the fluff I was going for, it didn't quite make sense. My thought is that you have, like, like I said, a VIP that's in a ship, 
with other people. I would want to have my VIP like just thematically. I'm trying to trying to balance that theme versus game mechanics. And the other thing I wanted to play around with was scenario actions. Right? So we have one scenario right now that has a scenario action. That's the toe, the toe action in um salvage cargo. And I was like, well, could there be some type of Instead of trying to use attacks to get the VIP, what if you're using some type of actions? So it's costing you actions in order to try to, to, get, to get them. So right now, my current iteration is the infiltrate action. All right, the infiltrate action. I started drawing out, it looks like, Angry stormtroopers is my is my is my symbol for the infiltrate action. Two charges. You could spend one charge to remove a shield from an enemy ship. All right. So you can choose to try to infiltrate another ship, and what it's doing is like you're a, you're doing some type of attack. Was the the idea very simple? It doesn't really cost you much, um, but in one of the other scenario rules is that you cannot infiltrate and remove the commander on a shielded ship which is why i have this single charge thing that has to go on now why did i make it two charges well the second part of the infiltrate action would be you have to spend two charges to capture the commander so what you could not do is on the same turn one ship comes up and says take your shield second ship comes steal the commander because once per turn, you only get two charges. So that was my variant, my kind of idea of some type of VIP um, type of scenario. When it came to scoring, this is where I have I have a bunch of question marks. I'm not sure. It's like, well, if you capture the, the, the commander, if you were able to successfully do that, which it would be marked with one of the player tokens, all right? Using, using the player tokens, what do you get? At the end of the end phase, you get X amount of points. And then I started playing around with was, well, can I infiltrate you back and get my commander back? Can I do that? And that's where, that's where I've gotten so far with this one. I would want to test it both ways. Uh, I probably want, would want to start with being able to bring back your commander. So, for instance, if you save those two charges, you could bring them back. There would be a range on it. They range 0 to 1 is, is probably where it ends up starting. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, some, it's another variant on a VIP escort-esque mission, which... I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think in the original, or maybe even in the second edition core set, there is some, like an escort mission in there. Or maybe it's, it's the first edition one. Is that what I'm thinking of? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, first edition mission pamphlet things. Definitely. I'm pretty sure there's an escort one. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it sounds like you're basically setting up like mobile capture the flag, where the flag yes. is moving because you yes. specifically put it on a ship. Yep. Um. I've actually, uh, let's two things. One, um, I realized one potential issue that I'm going to have to figure out with my uh, hyperspace or hyperlane one is mm -hmm. um, how to make, how to force enemy ships to not be on your hyperspace token when you're trying to deploy if they know exactly what turn. If you take mm -hmm. a Manaru and just land it on the token and cover all the zones. This like, is mine now. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't spawn? That seems like a problem. I need to uh, solve. What if it has to go on an obstacle? I mean, is that weird? Uh, that too is it too I, weird? I, All these things are weird. Is it too weird? May, maybe. Um, it's also worth considering that it still may be worth putting your ship on an obstacle just to <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll figure that out. But also, um, you got me thinking on the uh, what if uh, on the capture the flag thing in the Halo mm -hmm. aspect. Um, another common uh, game type in Halo is assault, which is a bomb related one. Mm. So what if uh, we have a scenario where all you have to do is say, okay, 
you either designate a ship to be carrying your bomb. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is reach the opponent's deployment zone and be able to do an action, bomb action, right? Drop. Mm -hmm. Or um, there are X amount, whether it's three or five, um, objective tokens on the board. And you need to, those are the bombs or charges. And you have to go pick them up and deliver them to your opponent's deployment zone. And for each one you get in their deployment zone and release or drop the bomb, it will net you mission points. Yeah. Yeah. I know Will was looking at something with bombs. He was trying to mess, trying to mess around with that. And that was one of the things like, well, well what do we do? It's like, well, you just make the, just give them a bomb, but they don't have a bomb slot. So <laughs> just give it to them. Why not? It's Star Wars. <laughs> they can fit it in anything. You can do whatever you want. It's Star Wars. That's the that's the that's the beauty of it. But you know, yeah. right? I, I one of one of my favorite part of this whole conversation is that like I I want people to understand like there's this balance between these can be super fun. But there are – you got to think about that list of consequences, right? It's like, well, if you do X, then what about Y and Z? And, and like, you know, you just keep – you keep kind of going down. And that's, I think, going to be the biggest challenge with um, – people creating scenarios because here's the thing i do want to do our, our call to action now as we continue to to break this down is we want to hear your ideas for scenarios okay what we've done is under the submissions only section uh in our discord all right it's under uh again su submissions only it's called custom scenario ideas we've put a template we've created a template that follows the amg form where you have the following basically different headings that you need to fill out. And they have little sections that are highlighted that I would expect most of the time that we need to be edited in order to create your scenario. So you have the mission objectives. So that's like the short synopsis of what it is that the thing I read when we did the uh, refinery conflict, the scenario setup, how many of the tokens I'm forcing it to be, you know, three, three on a three by three. That's why that's not highlighted. But how many objective tokens? Zero, five. I did one with four. You know, go crazy. Um, player order. I left that. I, I'm I'm forcing you guys to leave the player order thing in there. All right. That's th because that's like a core game thing. Uh, the place obstacles steps. That's a place where you can end up you know changing some things i did leave the wording in there if you want to use it that way you guys don't have to retype it it's in there for you already and then scoring scoring you got a lot of options there um i left de deficit points in there but you can choose whether or not you want to leave or or uh or remove half points uh and then the victory should always be like n knowing whether or not you win should happen at the same time. The question is, do you want to change those points or not? Uh, and then, of course, a section for scenario rules. What extra things in there? Are you adding a scenario action? Um, and, you know, take a look at that. I would suggest the best written of and the most detailed of the AMG um, scenarios is uh, Salvage Mission. That's the best one uh, because they've had to re reiterate it a couple times. Assault on the Satellite Array is the worst written one. It's very simple, but it's inconsistent with the other ones and how it's formatted. So I, so I started with that one. I was like, wait a second. This ain't right. Uh, if you really look at it, just so use Salvage as a, uh, as a template if you want something to compare it. But I, I want to see your guys' ideas. Go ahead. Post them in that scenario ideas. Start to iterate. And um, what I would love to do is on Wednesday nights with Will and James, start testing out some of these things. I will, I'll take some to Wednesday nights at, at, uh, at past times. And I want to come up with a set of... You know, what, what Will, myself, Ryan, uh, and Marcel, we're going to end up having our own, but ha have, a, have a set of around six to ten uh, that we can just have as a community that we continue to refine and say, yo, AMG, if you want to steal these, just go ahead. 
Just go ahead. Um, because the whole idea is that you know we're it's it's the we're here to to play games. We want to play games with each other and. Maybe maybe we'll hit on some things that they hadn't thought of, or maybe we will create, we'll be able to percolate some ideas there. Speaking of ideas, Dion, mm-hmm. I have a response from chat from Sunset Cyber yeah. trying to help me solve my issue of what happens when an opponent decides to place their ship on the hyperspace. They said, this one seems more reasonable, but I had a fun response. Mm-hmm. Uh, Just if unable to deploy normally, deploy using the first straight maneuver template that fits, i.e. place a one straight, on the end of one of the prong sides of the hyperspace marker and increase it by one until it does. So from one straight to five straight, find you get to go all the way out until you fit. I said, maybe that could work. That's probably the more reasonable one. But what if the enemy ship just gets hold on maneuvered except my ship gets to live? You want to go there? You're going to die. <laughs> I like that. I just like straight, that. Just straight, complete disincentivizing, one hundred percent. Don't be there. To, You're going to die. Don't be there when I come in. You die. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, don't eat the dice. Says legacy run. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's a uh, uh, a a um a new republic. Not new republic. What's it? The newest republic. Dang it! I'm forgetting. Not old republic. High republic. It's a high republic reference. Blocking ship is legacy run. The emerging ship causes hyperspace fluctuations that destroys the blocker. Yeah. Yeah. You die. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be there. <laughs> um, I think the issue becomes like, all right, uh, that would have to be them overlapping the hyperspace token. But like, then a big base ship comes in and they have to fit. Do does the should it be allowed for the opponent to manipulate what of the which of the three prongs based upon what's allowed to fit or not fit? Because imagine if a big base ship comes in and picks one of because if they could pick one of the prongs and then there's a ship there that's not overlapping the hyperspace token but it's blocking it, then like that seems bad to just say, oh, that ship now gets destroyed because <laughs> you've let a big base ship come in and you got to tell a big base ship to go out x amount of straights to make it there so i don't know i would have to figure out i would say like my my opinion on that is because you have a you have the situation where i as the enemy player have chosen the ship that comes out like the the hyperspace ship that's my fault like if if i'm in the way i i made a choice i will suffer those consequences if I'm messing around there, I think you, you you just be like, don't be here. You're going to die. Just don't. I think actually instead nah. of trying to move anything more forward outward, that, mm-hmm. all you do is train track it as if it was a block, right? And just do a straight maneuver along the prong off of it and follow the train track that would be the ship blocking it. As long as that ship is not over overlapping the hyperspace token. If it is overlapping the hyperspace token, you get the yeet. You out. You destroy. <laughs> I mean, it's like fleeing, right? You know, you can you can flirt with the edge of the board, right? You can flirt with the hyperspace token. Don't do it. Don't do it. This actually, the more I think about it, it does kind of have a high republic feel to it. Um, and I wonder, and again, this is my fluff brain going here. I wonder if the name could get tweaked just a little bit. Since I get to choose your hyperspace ship and you get to choose mine, if there's something in the name that could could essentially designate the fact that that ship was forced to go into hyperspace, right? Like, I wonder, I, I don't know what it is. I'm creating a problem and, and walking away from it. But, but I, I probably less of it being forced to go into hyperspace and that before the engagement ever happened and ships hyperspaced in, it got jammed up behind and lagged behind the fleet. Mm-hmm. Or had yeah, mess- something. Or, 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 or their, their, their guidance system was sabotaged and they had, and they, poof to the wrong area and they have to come in a few turns later and poof back in a different zone which yeah is in the enemy lines i like that some guidance <laughs> guidance 
the disrupted guidance chips. Now nah, that's, that's terrible. Too many words, but you know, some something like that could be cool. I like it. Um, let's looking looking at our um, looking at, a, at at our list here. So we asked is if it was fun. Uh, now you had written here. Uh, you may not have all the answers now, but that's okay. That's part of the journey. What do you, what do you mean by that? Go ahead, unpack that for me. So. Um, this kind of this kind of goes towards when I described and probably ranted a bit too long on uh, my process of starting with all these layers of complexity or these ideas that I thought were great and that would work together, um, and I felt like I had some of the answers to some or I built some answers to some of the issues that I thought I was going to have, and they could be answers I go back to later. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to simplify to make sure my foundation was good before I figure out, are those answers even necessary? Maybe I'm looking at the wrong questions that need answers for. If I tailor back my uh, scenario and make sure that the baseline works, or if the baseline doesn't work, what question or issues from the baseline do I need to have answers for? Because if you build up uh this if you build up a scenario uh and you find out later on that there's an issue that rocks the core of it and you have all these layered um mechanics and tools to help solve other answers that you were the only one that had questions for mm -hmm. and then you start getting people playing it or your peers reviewing it and you find out the different perspectives made a big deal in figuring out maybe there's another issue that I need to look at and you need to uh, be aware that you don't have all the answers right now because if you think you do uh, it's probably going to change probably going to change throughout the process of development mm -hmm. that's definitely happened to me throughout figuring this out between the last couple days of building this together and I guarantee this is not the final <clears throat> resolution right now. No one's played this once. There could be something <laughs> terribly wrong <laughs> that I would need to fix. So yeah. that's why it's best to start as simple as possible. Does your simplified version meet the goal of what you want your scenario to be? That's the big part. And mm -hmm. is it fun? Did the people that get to play it feel it was a fun, good addition to the lineup of scenarios did it add something different that the other scenarios don't already do love it love it yeah and like i said i really want to see your guys uh ideas i know I, I will tell you ryan i know by giving them the requirement that i, I want it in the template we're going to get less submissions because it's really easy just to throw out an idea and then not think about it i w i really would love to see some refined ideas um and maybe maybe we need to make a, a discussion for like scenario development chat or something like that uh where people can just throw out their idea to get some some feedback there but uh in in that submission folder we really want we want to see some uh some some built out ideas that way we can actually try them rather than i want to spend time trying your ideas and then suggesting balance, not developing your ideas, if that makes sense, at least on the onset. Um, I think that could be really fun because we, we are, we're taking the time to give you guys some. How about you guys throw, throw some back at us? Uh, I think that would be really great. Now, one of the things that I know that we didn't discuss in our GSP chat, but another way to go about scenarios that AMG has has tested without receiving any data i'll say it that way which maybe maybe they have the mini extravaganza weekends when they've done those each of those they've had like an event and i'm putting air quotes for those of you who can't see me where they say like hey at the beginning of the game you determined roles for both players and the people with those roles get X effects, whatever those effects are. That could be another way to build out a scenario. The only reason I didn't explore that yet is 
I think probably out of all of them, when you have opponents trying to do different things at the same time, that's hard to balance. Which is what's one thing I've I've found when when we were testing those or, or live streaming those different you know the what was the the last one was like hunted versus bounty hunter um, the first one I, f- I forget what it was like one basically was like a defender one was an attacker um, I think those are really difficult to balance but do you think there is there room for a scenario like that Ryan? Um. Potentially, I mean, like I said, there's room for any scenario option. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of, like I mentioned before, does it help provide something drastically new or new enough to add a wrinkle, mm-hmm. or does it um, does it jive with the current state of how the game AMG is designed to be played? You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. It's an interesting. Always possibilities. Just yeah. gotta try. <laughs> just gotta just gotta try it. Um, yeah, because like again, these are these are not easy conversations to have. They're not. Uh, <laughs> they're not easy to design. No, we're, we're basically trying to like compress potentially months of development for a game type within a game structure into like an hour or two <laughs> right exactly <laughs> all, exactly like what we're trying to say is you got to put real effort into it you got to get other people to look at it and you got to have people play it and try it that's right so we're we're gonna we're gonna keep going back to the the drawing board and i, I think ryan in your opinion you create an idea what do you think is the most important thing you should do once you get an idea out there um like once people have already tried it or no or before like i have my idea i'm done what's the next step oh get like five to ten other people to look at it right <laughs> and and, and ask all the hard that, questions right but but also make sure they're not the they're not five to ten people in the same group right mm-hmm. grab like a person from this discord a person from this facebook group person from this local store a person like you need different perspective you need different play experiences you need different levels of competitive or non-competitive play it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. don't silo it into being like i'm gonna just have my local friends try it that all agree with everything i say all the time (laughs) right you don't need confirmation (laughs) bias here you need the hard stuff here that's right. So I think this this should be a lot of fun, a fun exercise in uh, in game development. It's not easy, but I think it could be a good time for us as a community. And uh, we're going to set up the Discord with a – you know, Ryan, the more I think about it, I think we need to make a scenarios, like, header. I think I'm going to do that. Just so that people can uh... talk – a place to talk about it, too. And keep it, sure. yeah. Free, free form talk about it. Mm-hmm. So you could do like scenarios, general discussion, uh, full submissions, or like full document links or mm-hmm. whatever. By the way, it's really helpful to make these in Google Docs, but make sure when you share it, it's view only. Yes. Don't let other people <laughs> edit your stuff. I haven't made that mistake, but I'm telling you so you can less likely make that mistake. There you go. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm pretty sure people will find funny things to put in your document that may or may not be GSP friendly. That's right. That's right. The other thing I am working on is um, is a way for those of you who maybe don't have like Photoshop capability is getting a couple of very basic uh, sen- like objective setup pictures so that you could just kind of copy paste it in there if that's the setup you want to use. So uh, should be getting once once I can like install Photoshop again <laughs> onto my computer, we'll get that we'll get that done. But thank you guys so much for listening. This has been really fun. Ryan, is there anything else in closing you want to say before we uh, we head out for for tonight? Um, I mean. Just have fun with it at first. Um, make sure what you uh, are thinking about creating as a scenario, you would want to play. 
Mm -hmm. right? Don't just make something to be like, oh, I guess I have to make this because this person told me it'd be a better thing to make, or I have to make this because it's different, even though I don't really enjoy it. Like, you have to have fun with it yourself. Mm -hmm. There has to be that sort of like spark of either inspiration or uh, a desire to, to really want to uh, promote something or some aspect. Like for me, it was, I wanted to promote, promote or have a feeling or aspect of using ships coming out of hyperspace and doing the super cool flank. Or as I developed it, I found like, wait, if I do this little rule change, it could actually be like, wait, the ship coming out of hyperspace has gone, has fallen into a trap. Like you could have either one depends on how the scenario flows and how things go. So there might, you, you might also come across that time when you've made a scenario and you tweak a few things and then just something clicks and you go, wait, there's another layer to this and it made it even cooler. Do I want the first layer at all anymore? Or do I just want the second layer? <laughs> <laughs> do you want both? Do you want to do like what Dion said and say, I like this now. I'm keeping this later for the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Love it. Um, yeah. So we want to see your ideas. Take a look on the discord. We'll have everything organized in there. And I look forward to seeing your ideas next week. We'll be back here on Mondays. We'll hear from Marcel and will their uh, their current ideas. And we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of submissions um, as well uh, here on the podcast, give some feedback and hopefully we'll start playing these. Uh, well, you'll see these here on the table very soon. Thanks for watching everybody. Be smart. And be safe, and this computer better not eat it again. I'm going to be so mad. Gold Squadron, out.